Hi everybody! Today I'm gonna build myself a new lure dryer. Actually my old lure dryer isn't that old or broken down or anything, but uh, since I've moved out to my shed and uh, built this nice fume cabinet uh, paint booth thing, I'd like to have a, a lure dryer that will fit into the, the space in here. So I can have it in there with the ventilation going on and don't need to worry about the fumes or anything. Uh, it's not like the, 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 the lure drive itself is very complicated and not even uh, my design. But uh, at any way, I'd like to show you how I would make such a thing today. As always, when I start out on a project like this, I start out by making a sketch of my project. Uh, it might not end up exactly like this, but at least it'll give me an idea of what parts I need and uh, how they should be positioned and size and so on. Uh, if you're interested in building a, a lure dryer like my one, this drawing will be available to download in the text below the movie. Also down there, you'll find a complete shopping list uh, for the items you need. Uh, I can't uh, know if you can get these in all over the world, but at least there will be a list of those that I have used. Also, you'll find some links to the parts that I have 3D printed for this project. There's a few of them and you can uh, download those um, STL files and print them yourself or maybe if you don't have a 3D printer, you know someone who can help you with that problem, uh, that thing. Okay, so remember to look in the text below. There's all the information you need to actually make a lure, uh, lure dryer like my one here. I'd just like to start out by going through all the parts needed for this project. First of all, there's the motor, which is uh, geared to rotate uh, at about two rotations per minute. Um, it is uh, sufficient when you're coating with epoxy and probably many other things as well, so that is fine. Um, you might think that, well, this little motor is uh, very small for the purpose, but if you um, distribute your, your baits uh, well, along the axis, uh, making sure that all the weight is not on one side. It actually doesn't take much to, to rotate the axis. And if you take a look into a, a disco ball motor, which is very commonly used for, for lure rotators, well, the motor in here isn't really that big. And uh, this contains both the, the gearing and the motor. So at least it is not as big as this one, so I think this one will do fine. And actually, when you turn it on and try to stop it, it does really have a lot of torque. Okay? Besides that, you need a... This motor is a 12 volt uh, motor, so you need a, a power supply uh, for 12 volt. And um, as this motor is only one watt, uh, this uh, small power supply that supplies 10 watts is... Uh, Quite nice, this is even uh, waterproof, uh, well no need for that, not very expensive. Both of these are bought on uh, Ali uh, Express and uh, isn't really that expensive. Apart from that, you'll need some ball bearings and um, well, I was e uh, lucky to have some uh, lying around that is uh, being used for, for old rollerblades. So, um, well, they are very nice and uh, running quite smoothly, so that is fine. And now we come to uh, a few parts that I have printed on my 3D printer. And as I said before, the, the, the de designs for those are available for download in the text below. So you just go down there and uh, get those if you need them. First of all, there's some holders for the, for the, for the ball bearings. Fits nicely in there, okay? Apart from that, there's um, this connector, which in one end has a, a hole, which is eight millimeter, which is threaded. So it will fit to my threaded bar here, uh, my threaded rod. In the other end, there's a hole that is not completely round. It has a, a flat surface, which will fit the, the motor quite nicely. And very nicely, as you can see. And there's two threaded holes here for some uh, from bolts to go in and make sure that everything stays in place. Also, there's some um, some end things here for the for the axis, and the axis will be this uh, 30 by 30 millimeter uh, aluminum uh, rod here, 
and uh, these will fit nicely in there. I'll just uh, put in some super glue to make sure they stay there. And um, they are also having a eight millimeter threaded hole in them, which will also fit the axis. Then a few, few um, nuts here, eight millimeters, and um, some holders um, that will fit my my lure holder system here. Okay, like that. I need those as well. And of course, for those holders, a few screws. And as I said, there's the, the eight millimeter bar. I'll cut out some pieces that will fit the, the length needed. This one. And apart from that, I have a, whoops, a piece of a board here for the, the sides and uh, another one for the for the bottom here the the length the separator of the sides here okay so well that is more or less what i need i might need a few extra screws or something but uh, that is uh, that is being uh, figured out along the way okay well, let's get going and I think uh, we'll start out by making the, the sides out of the piece of board here and I'll use my, um, my sketch here to, uh, to write out that, to, to first of all draw that on the, the plate and then cut it out with my jigsaw, okay? We'll just start out by transferring uh, this in the correct uh, size to the to the board here uh, to be able to cut it out with the jigsaw. This. Okay, we now uh, transfer the, the drawing to the, the board here and I'll be using my, um, my jigsaw to, um, to cut it out. But actually, as uh, in one of my other movies, I'll uh, use my, my jigsaw to make a little makeshift uh, table saw instead because that will, I think, make it easier to cut this out. So I'll just do that and I'll be back in a jiff. Okay, now I set up my table saw here or makeshift table saw with my jigsaw and uh, this part will uh, probably take too long for you to watch and uh, be a little bit too noisy so I'll speed up the process a bit and put on a bit of music uh, while I do so. So just hang in here and I'll get this cut out. Now we've got the, the two pieces here, the two end pieces, and uh, well, they're a bit uh, not completely straight, but I'll just uh, sand the, the edges over to, uh, to smoothen out everything so it's, uh, I don't get splinters everywhere. And also, it's uh, very nice uh, to make sure that there's no uh, well, uh, wooden splinters or anything that will might be transferred to the lures uh, and their epoxy so uh, for that purpose as well it's nice to have them uh, sanded over so i'll just uh, go outside and do that and While I was outside uh, sanding these two pieces, uh, which are nice and smooth now, uh, I also took the time to, uh, to cut out the, the bottom of the, 
the dryer here and I used my, my gearing saw for that because I need those to be fairly uh, straight angles here. Okay, so I also made this one which is supposed to be the one that holds the, the motor there, but we'll see that later. Okay, now we're going to the point where uh, we need to drill a few holes in this one. And um, this, which is the top, I will need a hole that is big enough to fit a nut through it because I need to go uh, have a, a one of these nuts on each side of the, the bearing there, which will for one of them be inside the, the side here. So at least uh, the, the one hole should be big enough for this one, uh, just not uh, big enough for the bearing actually to go through. So I guess that would be 16 millimeters or something like that. Also down here at the bottom, I need two holes to uh, screw into the end of the of the base here or the separator whatever bottom piece there so i need two holes down there and um, so i'll just uh, make some markings for those and then i'll go to my table drill over there okay Okay, now the, the holes are done in both of them and I'll just need to, uh, to transfer those holes to uh, the end of this one and then I can just use the screw to uh, give me an indication of where the holes should be. Like that, like that. Okay, and I'll do the same for the other end. So now I'll just... Uh, just drill some holes here just by hand and with a, a diameter drill that is uh, a bit thinner than this one just to make sure that uh, the, the wood doesn't crack but still uh, uh, leaves enough um, wood to, to the, for the threads here to go into. So I'll just... Um, do that. And now we should be able to to screw in those screws fairly easy and at the right places. Okay, and then we'll just do the same down here. Well, now we have the frame here and um, well, I think it sits quite well. Uh, no wobbly anything. Okay, now this is done. So I'll go on to, uh, to make the, the axis of the thing. And um, that was the one we were going to use this one for. And uh, as you can see, I need to cut some of it off. So that will be the, the first part here. And I've done my calculations, so this should be 68 centimeters long. And I hope it will be long enough to hold 16 lures like the old one. It will be a, a bit more close, but I think uh, it's doable. So, I hope so. As you can see on the drawing, I did some calculations on the distance between the holes for the, the holders if I wanted uh, eight uh, evenly distributed over the length of the, the axis here. So I'll just uh, go ahead and mark those out. And uh, first of all, of course, I need a center line, which should be supposed to be one and a half centimeter, like that. Okay, and um, then I'll just start out by measuring, and actually I'll start out from both ends, so I'm fairly certain that it looks right. Now 
now the, the aluminum part here of the, the axis is, is fine and hopefully these fits nice and well into those like that and uh, I think they are a bit loose but once I give them a bit of epoxy, a uh, 5 minute epoxy I think they will be nice and firmly fixed there okay so this will be the, the axis and now I need to uh, take the, the threaded rod here, 8 millimeters, uh, and, uh, and cut out some pieces and um, they fit into the, the threaded holes here on the... which is very nice. This means as the hole is going all the way through that I don't need to be 100% sure how long it actually needs to be so I think I'll just cut out two pieces of uh, 10 centimeters and uh, I think that will be enough maybe uh, no it should be shorter if, if any so I'll just cut out the uh, two pieces of 10 centimeters uh, once again with my hacksaw so uh, okay and to make everything uh, nice I'll just file those off and uh, well if you think that the most annoying sound uh, you can hear is the one from Dumb and Dumber well I can tell you filing metal can be really nasty so you might get a glimpse of that here ah. and I'll just uh, test out with a nut that everything seems to be working yes well before I start the assembly I'll just uh, glue in those ends and uh, I'll just put on some gloves from that because I hate the sticky fingers from epoxy so just ordinary five minute epoxy your maker I'm sure you have some okay. Okay, and now I'll just leave that for five minutes and uh, we will be ready to go on. The, the end of the, the axis is now firmly in place. The, the, the five minute epoxy has uh, hardened. So this is firmly in place and ready to be installed on the dryer. Now I'll just uh, need to, uh, to uh, screw those um, Ball bearing holders I made on my 3D printer onto the to the the frame here. So I'll just um, put them in the center like this, holding them down, and then grab a drill and just uh, make some small holes for the for the screws. Doesn't need to be very deep, and then I can put in my ball bearing here. Grab four small screws. I forgot to mention those, but uh, as I said, there's probably a few screws and stuff I will add along the way. And put those I think that's nice. Okay, and I'll flip it over and do the same on the other side. So now the, the two bearing holders are in place. We have the, the axis here and we have the two, uh, two threaded bars here. And um, as I'm going to put it, kind of uh, assembling it, I need to have everything in place before I put it in. So I'll just place this one here, start screwing that into the axis here like that. And I'll do the same in the other side, putting on two 
nuts here and the purpose of the nuts is to uh, for one make sure that the the distance between this and the bearing will remain the same and um, the one for the for the axis will be to to make sure that that one stays where it should so now we'll just uh, screw this in a bit actually you can screw it in as far as we want uh, depending on what the how much space we need in the end and uh, on one end which is the one with the with the with no motor I would actually just want it just outside but I'll just um, lock it in place here with the and as you can see well it spins quite freely so uh, as long as you uh, distribute your bait uh, evenly along the 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 the, the, the axis here you will actually uh, won't need much power to turn this around it's it really it really spins very very uh, smoothly so that is why you don't need a, a big motor for running this as long as you are a bit considerate of what you're doing now i need to decide which end i'm going to use for for the motor and uh, well it doesn't really matter i think i'll use this one so this one over here i'll screw in quite far maybe like that i don't want to use force because the threads of the plastic well they don't hold that much i think uh, i'm not sure how much they'll actually hold so i'll just keep that fairly lightly tightened and uh, here on the other end i'll put another one and this should make sure that the 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 axis is locked in place there well as often in projects like this uh, things uh, work a bit different in, in real life than you actually thought so I found that adding the, the, the outside nuts here actually kind of locked the, the axis in place and uh, which I really didn't want. So I have uh, decided to uh, remove those. The, the axis is nice, uh, nicely fixed by the, the nuts on the inside. So what I'll do is to prevent those from actually moving around is that I'll epoxy glue those to the axis uh, by adding a few drops of epoxy down here in between and this should uh, make sure that they are locked in place and don't start moving around and I can keep my very easily running um, axis as it is so now we need to attach the motor and, um, and then after that attach that to some power and first of all, I'll add this one, like that. I'll fix that one here, like that. Everything is moving smoothly. Not wobbly or anything. Okay, and that one has a threaded hole here. I might end up cutting a bit off these uh, screws, but um, for now they are nice. So that should keep that one in place. Now I need to attach the motor to this, like this. I will now make the, the holder for the, the motor here. And the way to do it is I have this uh, little block of wood here and I will drill a hole through it out here that is the same diameter as the, the motor itself and then I will cut down on each side to have a, a U-shaped hole which will be uh, exactly the width of the, the motor and that way I'll just uh, be able to screw this into the, the side here and prevent the motor from running around. Still, I can always screw out this screw and pull out the motor and uh, change the motor if needed. Uh, I don't know how uh, 
long a lifetime these motors have. But um, that was the idea and that will also help me as I need uh, to solder on these wires from the power supply onto the motor here. So what I'll start by doing is I'll just remove this, it's very tight, and then I'll uh, measure the diameter of the motor which is somewhere like 24 millimeters and then I'll drill a hole in this one which is 24 millimeters and I'll just go drill that and you'll imagine me doing that because I won't show you okay and see now I made the the u-shaped uh, holder here and uh, I had to do a little bit of filing because maybe it's a little above uh, 24 millimeters uh, but now I think it uh, it fits quite firmly and actually it doesn't uh, wobble or anything so it, it seems quite nice so as long as I am able to use that let's just put this one in place like this okay with a bit of adjustments now uh, the, the, the motor has the, the exact position uh, that matched the, the block here so now I can just uh, screw in the block and then uh, the motor will be fixed in the right position there. So I'll just uh, do that and... Um Okay, and hopefully it still fits like it should. If I can just find the spot here. There, 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 there. Oh, it is so nice. Okay, now has come to a part that I must admit this is not my favorite, mainly because I'm not that skilled at soldering. I need to solder these uh, two wires onto this one and on the other end I need to uh, attach these one to a switch because I like to have a switch on the side of my lure turner and I'll be using the cord from the old lure turner which has a switch from a lamp sitting on it so that will be a, a cheap way around that. Well, I decided to leave out the part where I solder these parts together as, uh, well, I really am not good at that. But I ended up with a result and, uh, well, I can say that uh, they're nicely fixed and they will stay there. Also, um, I took some uh, connectors here and attached those to the, the wire I had from the old one, which is actually a wire from an old lamp. Okay, so now He'll hold this whole system is uh, put together and uh, I'll just start attaching it to the dryer here. So first of all I need to find the spot where the motor can go in like that. So now it's all the way in there. Then I need to, uh, to put this in place, the, the power supply here and I'll just uh, Put a few screws here so the power supply will stay in place and I'll just hold it in place while I drill some holes here without damaging the wires of course. Just need to make a mark actually. Okay, so now the everything is attached so why not just test it and see if it works. It's turning. I think uh, I remember the other one uh, started out with a bit of noise as well until the, the everything inside has been worn a bit but uh, at least it seems to work quite, quite nice now. Now the, the, the motor and everything is more or less fixed. I think I will add a, a little piece of wood out here on the side to make sure that the the motor stays in place. It, it well, it, it shouldn't be able to go anywhere. But but just uh, 
for the look of it. Okay, now the only thing we're missing is uh, to get the holders in place here. So I'll, uh, I'll just add those um, and that should be quite simple. Just grabbing one and grabbing a screw and then I'll just hopefully the hole will fit nice and tight without being too tight like that. Well, my little lure dryer building project is now over and I must say I'm very satisfied with the outcome. It's a very nice little, even nice looking little compact uh, lure dryer here, but uh, 16 lures just about match my uh, batch size anyway, so I find that very nice. Also, I must say that with the 3D printed parts, which is covering the, the, the areas that often takes the most time when you're making a, a lure dryer, well, these just turned out so well and so nice and really covered some problems I normally have with my lure dryer builds. Okay, so now there's nothing left uh, to do here, but uh, the few minor adjustments I've mentioned before, some glue here and there, shortening off some screws and uh, making some ending to this. Um, beside that, I think it's um, just about perfect. I can't wait to use it the first time. Remember, if you're going to build one of these for yourself, there's a drawing down in the text, link for the drawing down in the text below. There's a part list with uh, all the, the shopping uh, links I have. Um, and of course, there's links to the STL files for the 3D printed US, uh, 3D printed parts you need. Okay, so you should be set to go and make one of these for yourself. Well, there's nothing left to say, but I hope you see me soon.